Are you excited about your new business? You're excited about your new endeavor, but yet you fear the opinions of other people? You fear rejection or you fear maybe the unknown? Most people who start their business, begin in sales, usually have a shotgun approach and how to get business and wing it, hoping that something sticks. Hi, my name is Money Smart Guy Matt Zapala, and in this video, I'm gonna give you five areas of focus to calm your nerves, to close more business, and live your dream lifestyle. People today still rely heavily on their gut. They rely heavily on their emotions when making buying decisions. Now, because of this, us entrepreneurs have to connect emotionally with our customers or those that we want to recruit or hire for our company. Appealing to your buyer's identity will rely on our ability to listen to their verbal and nonverbal communication. First area of focus, number one, human nature. No matter what, people will usually default to their gut instincts. And understanding one's human nature will allow you to connect to their personality to help them make a buying decision. After working with my mentor, Patrick Bet David, I understood that there's four main personality types. To help you remember those four main personality types, just remember this acronym called STAR. S stands for structured and systematic. They need clarity and organization. T stands for technical. They love facts and solving problems. A stands for action oriented. They love adrenaline hitting goals, and making history. R stands for relationships. They love people and being a part of something special. So for example, if you're talking to an A, action-oriented type of person, talk to them in terms of big cars, house, lifestyle, recognition, money in the bank. That's how action-oriented people are driven to make a buying decision. Number two key area to focus is understanding why people buy. There's two main reasons why people buy. It's either the gain of pleasure or the avoidance of pain. Probing your prospect with questions like these will help you understand why they buy. What keeps you up at night? When you were in this position last time, what did you do? If you want to make six or seven figures, what plan and specifics do you have? Do you want to work for the rest of your life? Who is helping you and what has been their track record and advice? Has it worked out? When asking your prospect those questions, just don't listen to their verbal answer, but watch their body language. Watch how they move in the chair. Watch how comfortable or uncomfortable they become. They'll help clue you into the decision of why they buy. Third area to focus on. What problems do you solve? So what are the main problems that you solve? How serious does your customer want to fix that problem? What happens if the problem that your customer is facing never gets fixed? What are the consequences? And are they willing to live with those consequences? If they're not gonna fix this problem they currently have with you, then who? By you understanding what problems you solve not only increases your confidence in how your solution, your product and service solves their problem, but they clearly understand and become more of an educated buyer. Fourth key area to focus, helping people. See, I'm not focused on closing, I'm focused on connecting. I focus genuinely on wanting to help other people alleviate their pain and live a better life. One of the things I love to share is sharing stories about how my product or service or company has helped people in the past. Oftentimes, people get stuck in a product description of their company or what's written on a brochure. Now, here's the thing, Matt, I just got started. Well, great, if you don't have your own story, borrow the stories of success that other people have shared. And if you don't have many of those or you you don't connect with their stories, guess what? Start with your story. Start with your why. Start with how this company, product or service is helping you. Because then you start speaking from an area of conviction and passion and people are naturally gravitated toward people who are enthusiastic about how their product, their service or the company is helping them. Because if it can help them, it's easy then to help them fix theirs. Here's another thing to be thinking about. Would you actually sell your product, your service or represent this company or your company to your family, to your mother, to the people that you love and care about? And would you sell it to them? If so, your dialogue with your prospects should relatively be the same. For example, my job as an agency builder is to recruit people into an industry that's lacking personnel. Our industry today is less than 150,000 insurance agents in the entire industry. And just to give you some context, there's approximately 150,000 real estate agents just in the state of California. With that being said, I discuss how in the last 19 years, this industry has changed my life, formerly as a single father with custody of my kids, and without a college 
degree, a financial or business background has allowed me to earn a six figure income and now a seven figure income simply by understanding this industry and teaching others to do the same. See this company, the service, this product has changed my life drastically. So it's easy for me to discuss to other people how it can change theirs. Why? Because I'm coming from a position of helping people and not selling people. Just keep in mind, people generally want to buy. It's not like we have a savings problem that people are saving too much money in America. People are buying things left and right. And if you help people understand that you're helping them, they'll naturally want to buy and guess what? Money will follow. Fifth area to focus on, likability versus trust. So what do you think is more initially important, trust or likability? Well, Matt, you know, I've got the degree from this place. I've got alphabet soup behind my last name. I've got these certifications. And do you think because of that education, do you think because of that resume, because of that college degree or that seniority, people will naturally want to buy from you? As a matter of fact, when people say those type of things, they almost sound cocky or arrogant and sometimes entitled to get the sale. So most people often say that you need trust over likability in order to make the sale. But how are you going to be trusted if people don't even like you? Hate to burst your bubble. Maybe because I don't have a college degree. Yeah, or whatever. But people don't care about your certification, your resume, or the alphabet suit behind your last name. What they care about is if you genuinely care about helping them. If people don't like you, you're arrogant, snobby, and lack patience, they won't like you. You know what? If they don't like you, no matter how much alphabet soup and certification college degrees you have, they won't buy from you. With that being said, I hope this helps you shake off the nerves and helps you focus your energy because money is energy. Just keep in mind, it's not all about you. It's about your team. It's about your customers. It's about your partners. And it's about your community. In the next upcoming video, I'll be sharing with you the five shifts in mindset when it comes to sales so that you can be a resource you could be a trusted confidant and advisor and not just a salesperson because those people make a lot of money. In the meantime, please drop your thoughts and comments below. I'd love to know your feedback. I'd love to know what you think and how we could do better in that next upcoming video. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.